Did you know that there's a tunnel underneath, under, under, oh, I'm going to struggle with this. Um, did you know there's a, did you know that there's a tunnel? Yeah. Did you know that there's a, <laughs> oh, let me restart. Did you know there's a tunnel under, bo <sighs> hello everybody and welcome back. And today we are reacting to Lana Del Rey's new album that's just recently dropped. I'm, I keep missing the words. I, I, sorry guys, I'm going to have to read the title. <laughs> Did you know that there's a tunnel under Ocean Boulevard? There you go. That's what the title is. There's an even longer title of song that says, Grandfather, please stand on the shoulders of my father while he's deep sea, deep sea fishing. This is actually, <sighs> I feel like the internet is going to hate me because she is such an inspiration to so many of the artists that I listen to. I have never fully listened to one of Lana Del Rey's songs before. Like, none of them? So this is technically the first time that I'm listening to Lana Del Rey. I mean, it, it's bound to be interesting. To me, everything that I've heard so far, like the parts of songs and whatnot have been typically really really slow but i know that she's a great like songwriter as well it's 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 gonna make for a very in, like interesting experience that's for sure so without further ado let's jump into it Lana actually wrote a song that I like a lot from a singer named uh, Cheryl Cole that I think now goes by the name Cheryl. That was part of her A Million Lights album, a song called Ghetto Baby that I adored. And that is the first time I became aware of Lana Del Rey because she is the writer of the song. And it was handed over to Cheryl for her album. Um, and I noticed that the, the writing of the song was very, it stood out from the rest of that project from Cheryl. So that's when I first like noticed about Lana and it's been like I, I've I've known of her for a very long time. The chords are very uh, James Bond Z type of energy. A sister's firstborn child. I'm gonna take that too. Oh. Huh. Interesting. It really started off like kind of a James Bond type of sound and it went to a very like holy, like religious, heaven esque sounding, which makes total sense. But it's also super depressive. <laughs> so we're off to a great start. Love me until I love myself. It's pretty much what I expected of Lana Del Rey heading into this project. It's very slow, however, her songwriting and the lyrics especially, her lyricism, the references that she makes are so specific. Like when she talks about Harry Nelson's song at 205 breaking, uh, like his voice breaking. That, I mean, literally there's so many things that you have to like research in her lyrics and kind of figure out because you probably don't know most of the references when listening to her music right away. And that makes for like artistry. That's really what artistry is. It's all those moments and descriptions that sometimes you need to decode in the lyrics because it's not necessarily like, it's not all metaphors about her life, about things that are go undocumented that we, we don't understand, but it's, it's um, definitely like all public references that are like, are well archived and you have to dig to find them or you really need to be like like you need to know a certain niche to understand them it's kind of mesmerizing to just l read the lyrics and understand what the song is about and what the lyrics are about i'm a different kind of woman if you want some basic bitch <laughs> I was about to say that the song sounds like a like a song in the 60s that would play in the movies, like the black and white movies, until she said the line, if you want some basic bitch, and I was like, oh, that's never gonna be a black and white movie. If I'm not there, come to my son. So far, I think this is the song I like the most and understand immediately what it is about. And it is about this lack of depth in that relationship or situationship that you have with another person where that person is not like it, that person's avoiding any type of deep talk real conversation trying to get to know the person on a deeper level 
and how you're like, you know what, I'm I'm good if you actually want to continue this and you're ready to kind of commit and really go deeper than just like the surface, you know where I'll be. And it's, it's, I think it's really beautiful. I, I like it a little relatable too, but definitely well written. I like it. That is a long song. Whoa. Oh. The experience of being an American war. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, that was. I'm <laughs> trying to contain my laugh. This is very inappropriate. Now, this is the experience of being an American war. Oh, that's what AW stands for. Okay. Oh, and it's transitioning into a kind of second part of a song. Okay, I'm a. Um, I think this is my instinct and what I'm hearing. I feel like definitely because I know that Lana works with Jank. Uh, Jank. Jank. Whoa, Jack Antonoff, and that sounds like the same hi-hat he used on taylor swift's midnight album i don't remember which song exactly but it sounds like it it's just definitely the same hi-hat let me have a quick look at the cr album credits okay yeah, he did most of the album to begin with but all right so <laughs> that's quite obvious i immediately recognize that hi-hat that is probably from Hold on. Midnight's, 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 midnight's. A vigil lighty shit. Draw the cat eyes sharp enough to kill a man. Yep. Obviously pitched to a different note, but yeah, that's definitely his production. Jimmy, Jimmy, ride. Jimmy, Jimmy, cook up a Jimmy, oh give me a Judas Smith interlude. So we're getting our first interlude, which is four minutes and 37 seconds. That's a normal interlude length. <laughs> is, wait, is the whole thing like a monologue? The whole interlude is a monologue? Look at this. Look at the splendor of the skies. You created genius. <laughs> I do like the callback to that idea, like the line that says you're the ocean maker and the album being titled, did you know there's a tunnel under the ocean boulevard? Interesting. I mean, there isn't much to say about an interlude, um, other than it's an interesting sample. I wonder how, like, it makes it very cinematic overall. You've been acting pretty restless. First time I'm listening to John Batiste. I know that he won a Grammy, but I never took the time to get into his music. Candy While the song is not necessarily uh, off the bat one of my favorites, and I don't think I would necessarily return to listen to it, I do have to applaud the imagery. Like in the lyrics, like you can't. You can't deny the writing it's like it's there like obviously somebody like i i think it's definitely a little different from the rest of the albums and it, it's it makes sense because the production is also done by somebody else in antonoff and um john batiste wrote a part of the song with her so it, it makes sense that it sounds different uh it's so dramatic and like movie-esque I don't think I would go back to it anytime soon, but I appreciated the moment. Okay. I'm not gonna lie, the piano sounds like you're in Sims 1 decoration mode. It really sounds like you're in one of the options of like building the house or decorating it. Okay, not anymore. 
I mean, I do appreciate the fact that not all of the album is focused on songwriting, like the lyrics of the songs, but also the production. Like this is a moment where it's like the attention is on the production of it. And that's nice. It's obviously not something that's very common in pop music. I was there for the third cause I couldn't be. And I just can't stop crying cause all of the ways when you see someone crying. Yeah, I had a feeling it was about somebody passing away or dying. I might recognize the feeling a little bit. Um, it is quite a talent to be able to capture exactly how it feels having to deal with a close re a relative or somebody that you're close with passing away. Speaking from experience, uh, I didn't think I'd talk about it on my channel so soon, but my father passed away when I was 18 and there's a part of you that kind of doesn't want to deal with it, but also kind of you just let life do whatever with you because you don't like at that point you don't care and at the time I was living in the city and my father was living in the country with my mom and my brother and my father insisted that I continue my you know pursuing my higher education and not to stop while he was sick um and obviously sometimes I'm like I can could have spent a bit more time going back home although that's not necessarily what he wanted so it kind of was that feeling of a little bit like running away but also like being far from that situation and it's a moment where everybody's sad but also everybody's closer together but also everybody's in their own little bubble living the situation their own way in any case like the song is uh, honestly i get it why Lana Del Rey is such a highly praised songwriter because her lyrics since the first song of the album and mind you this is like the first album I've been listening of hers completely and like you know dedicating my time to it it's 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 really impressive it's actually really really impressive it's not fair or so they said to carry a child I guess I'll be fine With the fox wrong in your head To send me away Never to come back I just needed two seconds To be I don't have really much to say about the song. I think it is the one that, to me, was the nicest in terms of vocals. Like, I really like her... Uh, falsetto. Once again, I'm kind of blown away by the lyrics and the writing. Uh, it's it's uh, it's very raw, that's for sure. Also, kind of hits a little too close to home, considering my mom is called Caroline. But that's another point. Just wow. Uh, it's an ability to to storytell, which is quite amazing, to be honest. There isn't much to say. Like it's just you 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 stay in awe of it. That's it. When you know you know, then the more you know, it's time to go. It's so funny because it sounds like a Parisian song, which makes the title kind of pretty much fitting, but it sounds like uh, it sounds like French music. When everyone starts bright, brighter than you are. <gasps> <laughs> that was a beautiful song. I'm not sure I understand 100% of the lyrics and why, but that was nice to hear. Like an experiment. Some big man behind the scenes. So I'm Frankenstein. I kind of got lost in thought during the song, but it, it kind of goes to say that the production of the song is really, really great because I got lost in it. Like, I, I just, it's something that I was just experiencing. 
Like, there's no other way I can say. <laughs> Obviously, there's so much to decode in her songs. Like, the, the, the writing is so intricate, but definitely that feeling of, like, wanting to be seen as more than just one thing, especially by people that are close to you and that you value a lot, like family. You know, that, that ever ever ongoing battle of trying to prove that you're deeper than the surface. And once again, wow. It's a lot to take in at the same time, though. Not gonna lie. You know I got nothing on this other car. Oh. At your back door, yeah, cause I wanna come in. Um, is... Is this song about what I think it is? At your back door, yelling because I want to come in? That's a little sus. It does sound like a Beatles song. That's for sure. I think this is the type of song that you don't need to necessarily look for what the meaning is behind the song. It, it's just take it at, at face value. It's it's a moment in time. It's a description of this flirtatious moment between two people, and that's just what it is. It's focused more on storytelling than it is in like the complex and depth of you know the lyric writing. It just tells the story. That's all. He met Margaret on a rooftop. She was wearing white, and he was like, I might be in trouble, yeah. <laughs> the party's December 18. Ironically enough, my mom's birthday. Two references to my mom in this album. Interesting. That sounds like a Bleacher's outro. Like, Jack, Jack and Noth. Straight up. Straight up. It's definitely, like, the song is clearly about this girl, Margaret, but, um, not gonna lie, kind of had trouble keeping up with the lyrics and the meaning. But it was a nice production, though. You wanna be sadder. You wanna be sadder. Ooh, the production on this one. I really didn't expect the trap beat, that's for sure. <laughs> this is the most uh poppy sounding tracks of the album it sounds more like something it's closer to something you'd hear on the radio i think it's still very slow for the radio but still <laughs> oh Okay. So many references to other songs prior in the album. We don't need a reminder. We don't need to go back to the era. Okay, that just transitioned into a 60s song. Interestingly enough, in Spanish, usually when they have they have a word or a name, the cute way to make it is like ad ito or ita, depending on whether it's a male or female word or name. So like Lana would be Lanita, the same way Carlos would be Carlito. So that's why I'm guessing that's where it is. Definitely some uh, Latin influence on this track, considering the references to tacos, Lanita, Caribbean blue. Something like that. Also, a very long musical break. Oh 
what a closure to the album. I mean, I definitely understand why she's such a, a reference and an influence on modern day music. The talent in her writing is incredible. I love how experimental it is in terms of sounds without necessarily going too far in experimental so it's still like easy listening. Like the different genres and inspirations can be identified but it remains some sort of like like black sheep within pop music. It's really interesting. Is it a project that I personally will go back to? I'm not sure. I don't think so but I understand why it is what it is and who is Lana Del Rey. Like I, I just, it, it makes a lot more sense to me now. And I appreciate the artistry the same way that I would appreciate going to an art gallery. I don't necessarily understand the pieces. I don't necessarily know all the references that are used and implied in the art making of the pieces, but I can appreciate it from afar and recognize talent and artistry. It was an interesting experience for me to go and listen to this album. I know that she's done so many albums before and it's definitely not her first one so she has a whole like discography that I could discover. It might take me some time before I get into it but I, I'm appreciative of the experience that I had listening to this album and um, it brings me a whole other perspective on songwriting that I guess I didn't have before. So yeah that's what an that's what being an artist is all about. It's being ups and downs and plenty of colors and trying things and pouring your heart out and creating some some things that sometimes don't actually make sense, but it's a result of the blend of emotions and thoughts into a product that was, in the most positive way speaking, interesting to listen to. Truly. So this was my reaction video to Lana Del Rey's latest album, Did You Know There's a Tunnel Under B Ocean Boulevard? Almost messed it up there. <laughs> As per usual, if you like this video, although I know it was kind of different because it's not exactly up my alley, it's not my cup of tea, so my reaction might have been a little different. If you liked it nonetheless, don't, don't hesitate to subscribe, like this video, leave a comment, let, let me know, give me, I, I know you guys have been giving me a lot of information about the artists I've been reacting to. If you want to provide more context to that, I love reading your comments and going through it and understanding what everything is about. Maybe I missed some stuff, maybe some things were like plain obvious and I just like skipped over it. But yeah, leave me a comment down below. Hope you guys are doing well and I'll see you next time. Bye.